evening, everyone. This has been a very interesting meeting. Uh, Bruce, you probably you set my expectation level pretty low, but I'm impressed. I'm going to try to talk sensibly here because my wife's on another Zoom call. I don't know if you can hear me okay like this. Sorry, I'm just... I'm not sure if we had that scenario before I do that, but um, we don't know what we are doing. It's from this iron depression experiment. Um, I'm not going to know enough to introduce him to Eros because they take on student interns in their program. And there's also another great organization called I Do or I Do You. And they're involved with uh, NASA and um, the uh, launch pad down there on the east coast in uh, the Dormont Peninsula, I think. So I'm going to get another organization that you'd be interested in. Ships. Okay, I'm here to talk this evening with you about Project Ascend. I'm kind of excited about this, this project, this uh, concept I came up with. I'm currently seeking OIPC funding for it. And uh, for the reasons which you'll uh, see in a moment here. I'm Oh, sure, absolutely. Um, amateur Radio Digital Communications, I think is the acronym, they on the West Coast. They have an obscene amount of money that they're going out in the form of grants to withdrawal classes and, and projects. Um, they acquired all of this money through the sale of um, a class A internet domain. The addresses. And so, um, I don't know how much they're going out every year, but it's, it's quite a bit of money. Uh, they give some of it to a chunk of AOLL, um, who in turn gives out grants to radio clubs, like several club students and lots of them recipients of a lot of the grants. So, the problem is, I and others see it, is that uh, the licensing amateurs, technician class amateurs, are a pretty good clip, but it's almost like a revolving door. As soon as we get them in, uh, they lose interest. And this anecdotal statistic here, uh, the Natural Area Radio Society came up with this as a result of polling their the boot camp participants. And they figured that only two in ten new license terms after a year. That's a pretty sad statistic. And I thought that we were not trying to to grow, we're not trying to get our average age down, which is kind of my seven things I guess these days. Um there's a couple of things we can do to combat this problem. We can reach out to these people who have left the hobby or the brand new ones who have just gotten into the hobby and maybe they don't have a radio club. Maybe there's no active club in their area. Maybe they have no mentors. Uh, nothing to help them other than maybe a, a YouTube video or something. And that doesn't really substitute for one-on-one uh, mentor, mentoring. Um, Project Ascend is divided into a couple of phases. The first phase is to identify them, reach out to them through the directed mailing, um, give them information about the upcoming New Division Convention, where they'll have oh, lots of goodies available to them. And then um, finally, uh, we're in the process of developing an HLP equipment learning program, which should modify that to say VHF as well as HF. If there's some folks uh, may not want to, they may want to upgrade and be active in hobby, but they may not want to get on each other. So uh, we have configurations that we're looking at it for VHF, VHF equipment as well. And we're going to mention the three phases. I'm basing this around the convention. Uh, although it doesn't have to be that way, I just find it um, convenient to, to, uh, to structure it this way. So, what should this money go and ask them for? Well, um, in fact, 
and said $7,200 would be earmarked to the direct mailing campaign to all 16,000 licensed technician class amateurs in the world. Um, one of the uh, folks on our team, uh, Eric should be on EHG, uh, has direct mail experience and he's promised us that he is going to craft a message uh, on these postcards that will convince people to not toss it in the trash can right away, but actually read it. Uh, click on, on a website, click on a QR code, or uh, whatever, and, um, and help them and bring them in. Um, one technique, of course, is to use a non-standard sized card. I prefer it's a color card. And just craft a very enticing message on this postcard. Because again, when you get junk mail, um, if you're like me, typically it's right in the trash can. But if there's something that catches your eye, you're probably going to look at it before you throw it away. We want to call attention on this card not only to the convention, but to a free gen class upgrade uh, class that's going to be sponsored by the New England site Eric uh, in Newark. If you've never heard of this outfit, it's a tremendous organization led by Bob Finney, Kid 5 PEC. Uh, this is a $45 value course that was offered for free. And those who do attend the course are going to get some money off on their ticket to the companionship. Uh, among other things. Uh, before I leave this slide, I just wanted to point out uh, that the sort of group these technician amateurs into the first categories, the ones who are, are brand new, uh, maybe they don't have the mentorship they need, then those who are um, minimally active, they've been licensed maybe for a number of years, uh, they find that there's no one to talk on the leaders with anymore, and they'll be, they've lost interest, but they haven't totally given up. And then those who are totally active, totally dropped out, but maybe we can persuade them to return if they like to consent us. Much of the success of this project I think hinges on acquiring a good database of mentors who are going to work with folks and, and not necessarily in their own town or the mountain. Again, this is targeting people who may not be near an active radio club, uh, may not have a lot of active hands in the town. So I think that's the key to the success to this program, to get them to come to the convention. Yes, but we want to retain them, we want to, uh, and then we want mentors to reach out to them on a regular basis, ask how they're doing. Uh, and these mentors that we want to sign up don't necessarily have to show our heavy duty technical credentials either. Just somebody that would show an interest in, in uh, their high media growth and paying them occasionally. Uh, at the convention, we've got several things planned. We want to give them a special ribbon that they can put on their badge to identify them as project to send uh, attendees. We want to make sure that all of our presenters acknowledge them at the beginning of their talks. We have a different star and there may be a round of applause uh, because we want to make them feel special. And we also want to have special prize drawings just for the project to send participants. So this year's in exposition is going to be really good at introducing them to um, uh, on the air activities. We do have a little track that we're doing. Uh, we also have a, we're playing a contest track. Um, we, in addition to all the other talks and presentations, of course. And I'm trying to find a club somewhere in New England, I haven't nailed them down yet. Someone that might want to sponsor a mentor table at this invention. Sort of like the, the Shell Answer Man, where someone can walk up and say, I'm having some trouble with, with my antenna, or whatever the video is acting funny, what do you know? So, uh, 
I think it's not somebody that has to be an expert in all areas, but uh, maybe some folks that can share uh, the new kind of uh, in the right direction so that it can get an answer. Incidentally, you'd be amazed how many people who are ARR members don't realize that they can pick up the phone any time they want and call the uh, technical folks at headquarters, call the lab, and get answers to your questions. Oh, and um, the, um, also the, um, in terms of operating, we're going to make an all-out effort this year that our special events session will be staffed by members of the Providence Radio Association. And this will be a greater session for the first time. This will be to get people on the air, not necessarily to show them a super deluxe contest station. Those of you who are this Boston, uh, which I think is the wrong approach. There are tribal mentors that are, are sitting there, and hopefully we'll help people get on the air for the very first time. From, uh, from our new special event called Sun W1 XPO, it's an exposition. Let me pause for just a minute and see if anyone has any questions so far. We had a volunteer uh, who wants to get on a mailing list so he can volunteer and help out. Fantastic. I'm an emergency coordinator for Hillsborough County, New Hampshire, all of Hillsborough County. And we're trying to grow Hillsborough County areas as well as the New Hampshire areas. But uh, we have a tremendous number of resources. We're part of the group that does the uh, the training that we used to do at uh, New Hampshire's Academy. So I'm part of that group. And I'm very sure that we can get resources. Can you give me your call phonetically, please? November Alpha One Tango. Got it. Okay. I'm definitely going to reach out to you. I, I forgot to mention at the top of the talk that there is a uh, Google form that's set up to recruit uh, mentors at this point. I haven't really advertised it yet, but uh, we'll be kicking that into to high gear soon. And I'll, I'll definitely reach out to you in particular. And uh, maybe we can chat offline. Okay, so I'm a member of the Shoba Valley, actually it's mm -hmm. Merrimack Valley Amateur Radio Club. And we have built a mesh in New Hampshire. It's interconnected into Massachusetts and Maine. It's expanding as quickly as we can. We have gone to ARDC for funding. We have gotten funding. So mm -hmm. we have some experience there. If you want to send me some information about that, I will return information as well. I appreciate that. Yeah, I'd be happy to uh, share with you my uh, application that I put in, which was on February 1st. In fact, I should be hearing something back from it uh, either around April 1st or May 1st. They say 90 to 120 days. So, um, or I'm sorry, 60 to 90 days. So I'm, uh, I'm yeah, hoping for good results. Close. It usually goes towards the latter end of that. And when we did it the first time, they bounced it back. <clears throat> we had to fix it and send it again, but we did get money the second time around. Um, That's fabulous. And I know that the folks here, and uh, just to digress for a moment, the folks in Massachusetts also want to set up mesh networking through uh, Rob Leiden, K1UI. And he has also uh, gotten permission from FIMARA that's the organization that sponsors the New England Division Convention. Uh, they're going to back him as the uh, the nonprofit 501c3 for his application. And that's who's backing me for this application here. Okay, we but, created uh, a 501c3 mm -hmm. just so we could do this. Mm -hmm. That is Jay Taft. I don't, you may yeah. have his information. Oh, yeah, Jay's helped me with, uh, well, I'm getting way off topic now, but Jay's helped me set up a little... Uh, mesh here the, that's bridged over the internet because I have no one to to talk to directly with my little. Anyway, l let me but get back to, bottom. pardon me? But yes, we have the resources to at least point you in the right direction. Sounds good, thanks. And, and I should also say that uh, this project is in no way meant to compete with uh, any other club's mentoring projects. In fact, what I hope that it will do is to bridge the gap and even link some radio clubs who I, I view it sort of as, as 
islands of mentorship. Lots of clubs have really good programs, but they're not talking with one another. And I'm just afraid there are a lot of hams that fall through the cracks because, again, they're not close to an active radio club where they don't know anyone. So um, that's the uh, the purpose of this. Okay, um, phase three kind of makes sense, right? We want to set up a listserv to keep mentors and mentees in touch with one another. Uh, we'll coordinate with Zoom sessions. Uh, I guess the big component of phase three will be this equipment loaner program. We're going to spend um, a fair amount of the money to purchase good quality used HF and VHF equipment to comprise a loaner program. I suspect that there are radio clubs out there who who have equipment as well. Maybe they're not loaning them out often. Maybe they uh, don't have the resources to, to do it well. So this will be an opportunity for, uh, again, to connect clubs together, uh, to share ideas about uh, loaning out equipment. Uh, one of the, our team members, uh, Dan Norman, in 0HF down in Connecticut, makes it um, basically his hobby to search for estate sales, to search eBay for good quality used equipment. Um, when I approached him, he told me that he will uh, take on estate sales and he'll retain a portion for his troubles and, and then give the money back to the, the families of the estate. So this is right up his alley. Uh, he jumped right on it when I told him what I had in mind here. Um, of course, we'll need to uh, set up all sorts of of uh, rules here in terms of a uh, contract, as it were, so that we make sure the equipment comes back in good shape. Um, and again, I think this is where the mentor check-in is vitally important. You can give somebody equipment to set up a station, but unless uh, you give them that support that they need, checking in with them, asking how it's going, what problems they're running into, and so forth, that's the key to it. And that's where we need regular mentors and a fair number, I think, who are willing to do remote mentorship. Uh, I'm not even going to begin to <laughs> read the spreadsheet to you because uh, the font is way too small, but uh, this accompanied my ARDC budget application. It gets a breakdown of of money that we want to spend for promotion, for brochures, most importantly, the cont the postcard campaign, as well as the um, purchasing the used equipment and uh, expenses we'll have at the convention for promoting us. And here is a slide of the team members, the leaders, as it were. Uh, I've got one or two more names to add to this list. Uh, and if anyone in this group would like to play a major role in this project, I would welcome hearing from you. As you can see, many of these folks are uh, heavily involved in the ARRL field organization. Uh, we've got several section managers here. We've got an affiliated club coordinator from Western Mass. Uh, this is not an ARRL uh, or New England division uh, sponsored program, though. Uh, I just want to point that out. And I'm open for any questions, suggestions that uh, you might have. Or thoughts. What What are your thoughts about this? I think it's great. You were talking about having a card, like a postcard go out. One thing that might be interesting is to make it a, a fancy QSL card. Ah, QSL card design. Okay. That's good. Yeah, we haven't even begun to touch uh, what the design will look like. Anyone else? Does anyone think this will fly, or is it a colossal waste of money? I'm curious to know. Say that again. What's the total ask we looking for? Yeah, yeah, Phil. How big is your grant request, money wise? Twenty twenty four thousand. Okay, and how does that roughly break down? Postage, equipment, um, that kind of thing. There's about 7,200 earmarked for the direct mail campaign, and there's about 90 
it was 9,600 mar earmarked for the um, the uh, used equipment, and I don't remember how many thousands of dollars for the uh, the um, convention-related expenses. We, we are going to have door prizes. That's going to bring in some uh, expense right there. Um, those are the but three it, expense areas. Those are the three major areas. Yeah. Um. No boxes. No, they're not uh, no boxes, yeah. Steve. I think. Yeah, but so they are. They they be multi-purpose. The the question, Phil, is that are we are you building go boxes or is this just equipment to lend out? This is equipment to lend out. Um, Dan is organizing. I, I wished I'd had his slide here tonight, but he's already organized uh, configurations, about six or eight different configurations of HF gear, VHF gear, accompanying the, the accessories that go with them, as well as antennas, because it's important, of course, that um, uh, not everyone can put up a, a wire antenna in a backyard because they may not have a backyard. So we're looking at, at various configurations of rigs, equipment, and antennas. I guess that's it, Bruce. Thank you uh, very much. Thanks for listening. Thank you, Phil. Thank you. Thank you.